Welcome back to 12th Year Health. I'm Dr. Derek De Silva in for Janine Strafasi. Today we want to introduce you to someone who literally puts people's faces back together. Lots of people dread having to sit in the chair of a dentist, especially an oral surgeon, but you definitely hope you'll never end up needing the services of this gentleman. Meet Dr. Manoli Manalakakis. Dr. Manoli is an oral and maxillofacial surgeon in Shrewsbury. He's also on staff at three New Jersey hospitals. Also with us is Thomas Macchia of Tom's River. Tom is a patient of Dr. Manoli who was severely injured in a motorcycle accident and underwent surgery to put his face back together. Dr. Manoli, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, uh, you know, you think about a maxillofacial surgeon and it's, oh my goodness, I got to take my wisdom teeth out. All right. What do you guys really do? Well, our, our specialty is very, very involved with the facial structure. Um, and we do reconstructive surgery, we do cancer surgery, we take out wisdom teeth, uh, we also put in dental implants. And the wisdom teeth and the dental implants are what kind of the, the public knows us about, um, but we're really in the trenches fixing faces um, from car accidents, gunshot wounds, etc. Right. So uh, there was recently a case where literally somebody's face was changed. I think it was in France or I'm not sure exactly where that the was. The Cleveland Clinic had a, uh, the first facial transplant mm -hmm. uh, that was done several weeks ago um, and with, with pretty good success. And I was going to say, those were probably maxillofacial surgeons that were really involved in that, well, right? They're, they're, plastic they're, yeah, surgeons. plastic surgeons, maxillofacial surgeons, and also microvascular surgeons because it, it was a team of 22 surgeons. So okay. it, was, it was pretty involved. Well, l let's, let's, uh, let's talk to this gentleman sitting right here. And by the way, folks, some of the pictures, we're going to show you some pictures, especially our first picture, is very graphic. So I just want to warn you uh, just a little bit about this. Uh, Tom, what about your accident? Tell us what happened there, please. Oh, I was on my way uh, to my buddy's house. Uh, stopped in a gas station. Stopped for gas. Stopped to get a pack of cigarettes. Uh, con continued on my way. And uh, 100 yards up the road, uh, a person had pulled out directly in front of me. I couldn't, couldn't prevent, I couldn't stop in time. And it was a matter of split second, I was into her left front fender. Okay, so, and you were, you were literally on a, on a motorcycle, I would imagine, yes, right? Yes, This is a motorcycle correct. accident. Um, how, uh, you know, and by the way, there's the, there's the picture that we have of you. I mean, how, how long after your accident was this? Probably immediately after, right, Tom? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, you probably obviously don't remember this. I don't remember that. Yeah, I'm sure you don't. Dr. Dr. Minoli, yes. what about your role, a maxillofacial surgeon's role, in a situation like this? How important, how critical, how soon? Well, obviously the first things that we want to do uh, is get Tom or anyone who has an inju injury like Tom to a trauma center. And he was taken to Jersey Shore University Medical Center, which is in Neptune. And the trauma team stabilized him, uh, making sure that his vital signs were correct, that he was stable. At that point, the appropriate consultation is made, and that's where I come in to secondarily evaluate the patient, take care of all the injuries of the face. Tom, how soon after your injury, after your trauma, did you become aware of the severity of your injuries? Um, probably five days. I was operating on five days after, uh, after, the, the, accident. after the accident. Uh, probably laying in bed and hitting the uh, morphine button. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's probably what. And Dr. Minoli, how long after the trauma, the initial surgery, I guess after it was stabilized, did you get involved with the surgery? I was actually contacted immediately uh, from the trauma bay, and the reason I was, he had profuse bleeding from the oral cavity as far as the palate. Um, so, which is inside the which mouth. Which is inside the mouth. Right. So I had to stabilize him uh, immediately. He had a lot of moving parts to the face. Mm -hmm. So I actually, to make him comfortable, I just wired him shut as a kind of a set up surgery for the big surgery. And Tom, um, talk to me about what this whole thing was like. We've got some other pictures here of you, uh, I guess about two weeks later, and we're going to put them up shortly. But, oh, here it is right here. I mean, this is two weeks after your your initial trauma, this is, this is unbelievable. This, I mean, this is, this is wonderful, quite honestly, when you talk about two weeks later. What are your thoughts, what's going through your mind as you look at this picture right now? I've come a long way. I'm sorry, what did you? I've come a long way. You've come a long way. And how long ago was this, by the way? Uh, July 20th of 07. 
So yeah, July twentieth. Okay, so it's it's been a while. And and what about you, Doctor Doctor Manoli? I mean, what where is his care now? Where was his care after surgery? What did he have to go through? Uh, well. Initially, you have a lot of healing just uh, as physical healing. The wounds have to heal. We have to make sure no <clears throat> infections occur. Um, there is a very, very strong psychological component that goes in the healing process, um, and appropriate consultations had to be made. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder had to be evaluated, um, and now he's actually in the final stages of his recovery where he actually now has to see his dentist and get some of the final uh, touches done from some of the injuries he's sustained. Tom, are you still riding a motorcycle? Absolutely. My goodness, you know, I'll tell you, I've, I've ridden motorcycles and I rode a motorcycle through medical school and, and you know, the hardcore guys are, are always going to get on there. Uh, do you take any other precautions now? I mean, it, it, what is it that you do? Uh, no, I've always been, tr I thought I was a safe rider, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I guess, yes, I I take it a little slower. Mm -hmm. Take it a little slower. Wait that extra couple of seconds right. to be aware of your surroundings because right. you need eyes in the back of your head. Right. And what about the cigarettes? You said you stopped to get a pack of That's cigarettes. It. Doc, I'm done. That's gone. That's gone. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Good. After, I mean, after the tracheotomy and okay. not be able to breathe. That's that's enough. Absolutely. That's enough. Doctor Manoli, yes. I'll give you the uh, last word here. Sure. Uh, recommendations to people. What do they need to do here? Uh, well, first thing you need to be is aware of who is able to treat these injuries. Um, there are multiple specialties that treat the face. Um, my specialty, which is oral maxillofacial surgery, we really concentrate only on the face. Um, so our initial role in all of this is bone surgery, soft tissue, anything that kind of restores the health right. and the aesthetics. Uh -huh. Very good. Well, I mean, you, you've done a fabulous job. Look how wonderful he looks. I mean, it's oh, incredible. <laughs> Our best wishes to you with your thank recovery. You very much. And continue doing all the good things. I'm glad you stopped smoking. That's good, too. I'm That's sure Dr. Manoli's thrilled with oh, that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And congratulations on the fabulous job that you did. Thank you very much. Job. Thank you for having us, and Pleasure. happy holidays. Thank you very much. Folks, if you have any questions or comments about today's interview, or if there's a topic you'd like to see discussed in our program, email your thoughts to us at 12 to your health at